by quiet and sober citizens like Frank Manor. Father of ten children, a countryman, a hunting man, a man used to wooded swamplands by night. Frank Manor's UFO remained over his swamp more than four hours. His children saw it, his in-laws saw it, residents of the area saw it, and the police saw it. Oh, it uh, moved very rapidly at any speed or rather any direction it wanted to go. Why it could change and go to the right or the left or go crossways uh, without hesitating a bit. They're being surrounded by friggin' UFOs. Mass UFO sightings like you just watched before. It's been happening throughout the decades. Alright, today we're going to dive into the Sean Ryan Show featuring Dr. Stephen Greer. It's number one on iTunes, number one on Amazon, right. number one on anything else? Google Play, all the sites. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Number one documentary released. Retired emergency doctor, founder of the Disclosure Project, documentarian, author, and leading authority on UFO, UAP intelligence. You've briefed multiple presidents, you've briefed the agency, you've briefed Congress, I believe. Uh, recently, you presented evidence of the operations by the U.S. government, and you have 33 years experience working in the UFO, UAP arena. Right. Am I missing anything? That's good enough. <laughs> so Dr. Stephen Greer's been dropping bombshells about the UFOs and especially the military industrial complex and how we've basically had a lost century of technologies that have been suppressed or hidden from us, including zero point gravity and free energy. And he's also dropped some bombshells about the electromagnetic energy source that lives in our atmosphere carried through from the sun and basically what our future could be with a free energy future so i'm going to go through little clips of uh his interview on the sean ryan show and we'll dive into it right now uh was the head of the lockheed skunk works and acknowledged towards the end of his period there um that they had uh, technologies that could quote take t et home he also stated there were no private conversations anywhere on the earth true mm -hmm no matter what your encryption is. And also he said that anything you imagine, we can, we have already done at the Skunk Works. Now there's the Skunk Works that would deal with a conventional jet, rocket, you know, ramjet type classified aircraft, right? But then there's another division that is the deep black. I wanna make a distinction between the black budget and highly classified legally overseen projects. Mm -hmm. Here I'm talking about, you know, there's a guy I'm working with now who literally oversees the black budget of the United States. He was never read in on the UFO or UAP issue. And when he tried to find out, he went out to the Lockheed Skunk Works, he was told of showing a bunch of these conventional propulsion systems. He was not shown the ones that are the man-made UFOs that are the electrogravitics, the things that float, boom, 100,000 miles per hour, the USG, the US government, legal. And then there's the illegal secret government projects, okay, the ISG. Mm -hmm. So there are compartmented operations at the Lockheed Skunk Works dealing very specifically with this area of technology, which has nothing to do with rockets, jets, conventional aerodynamics. And it has to deal with electrogravitics, which is the ability to create a very high voltage system that causes a electromagnetic field propulsion. So there's almost like an electromagnetic field bubble around an object. It can levitate, lift, and it can go, you know, Mach 300 and never have a sonic boom and no heat on the, on the outer section of it. It began to be studied back long before I was born, and I turned 68 this week, so you can imagine how long we've had these, these things. Uh, we actually mastered gravity control in October 1954. If you're wondering how we managed to master anti-gravity technology in 1954, I advise you to watch the Lost Century film. It describes the guy that invented the first anti-gravitic type of technology and how they confiscated what it from the public, him. And, the, and this is true of the senators and the congressmen in the White House. They are not read in to these other projects. They simply aren't. So there's facilities out in the desert 
Uh, if you go out to the Mojave Desert, there's an, uh, a, a facility and an underground opening. So the really sensitive uh, facilities are all in uh, uh, underground skiffs or, or dumps, deep underground military base facilities. And that whole area of California is like a beehive connected underneath with tunnels. Okay. I know where they are. I know people who've worked in them. Now remember, I, those we have, are, are those all Lockheed? No. Because those were actually built by Bechtel Corporation or HIT Construction. There are a few contractors who build these underground connectors between, say, Edwards Air Force Base and Nellis hmm. Range. And you never have to go above the surface. So Dr. Greer isn't just talking shit either. He does have his sources. He's investigated people that have worked in these underground bases. Let's call it a... <laughs> a coalition of operations that are corporate, contractor, and governmental, but governmental as in off the reservation of legal oversight and, and constitutional re requirements. This is why the Senate and the House are moving quickly to get this under control, because about a year and a half ago, we were providing enough information that they now realize that this is real, that the UAPs, UFOs are real, and they're beginning to realize that a bunch of them are ours. And trust me, this is why it's starting to come out. The congressmen and congresswomen of the government aren't happy that they haven't been disclosed this information. One of the main people attacking this subject is Congressman Tim Burchett, who actually recently appeared on the Weaponized podcast with Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. He makes a statement that he is going to investigate this until the truth comes out. I don't take that kind of uh, thing very lightly. So, okay. no, I, I look, we need to get this out. As a reporter, I'm sure you've seen these you've, Freedom of Information Act, you know, which is really just bogus. It just allows them time to say, oh, wait, they want this stuff. Let's let's cover up all this stuff. And they white out everything. And I and Jeremy, I know you and I have talked about this in the past as well. It's just very frustrating. Just give us the unredacted files. And I go back to I go back to the Kennedy assassination 60 years ago. Nobody's alive that was a part of that. And yet they still will not release it. As a reporter and a journalist have a have a, a duty to find out. But I'm for the record, I'm with you. Whatever the truth is. I, I, we're going to throw a, a UFO transparency grenade into the public. People have a, have a right to know, a need to know. And again, I, have a, I feel a duty to find out whatever the reality is, no matter how strange or bizarre or even scary it is, as long as we don't hurt our country and our advantage, the American public has, has, a, has a need and a right to know. Do you agree 100%? 100%. Would you expect major pushback from the Pentagon? And speaking of that, if you want to see Pentagon pushback, well, here it is on a platter in front of the Congress. Listen to what they have to say. That there have been UAP observed uh, and interacting with and flying over sensitive military facilities, particularly, and not just ranges, but uh, some facilities housing our strategic nuclear forces. Uh, one such incident allegedly occurred uh, uh, at Malmstrom Air Force Base, in which 10 of our nuclear ICBMs were rendered inoperable. At the same time, a glowing red orb was observed overhead, asking you whether you're aware of it and whether you have any comment on the accuracy of that report. Let me pass that to Mr. Bray. You've been looking at UAPs over the last uh, three years. Uh, that data is not uh, within the holdings of the UAP task force. Excuses, excuses, like usual. Okay, but are you aware of the, the report or that the data exists somewhere? I have uh, I have heard stories. I have not seen the official data. Look at them blatantly lying about the subject, like Dr. Kirkpatrick did at the last conference. So you've just seen informal stories, no official assessment that you've done or exists within DOD that you're aware of uh, regarding the Malmstrom incident. Uh, all I can speak to is, you know, what's within my cognizance, the UAP task force, and we have not looked at that incident. Oh, uh, great. Our UAP task force doesn't even investigate UFOs. That makes so much sense. Well, I, was, I mean, it's a pretty high-profile incident. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert on this, but that's out there in, in the ether. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, if, who else is doing it? If something was officially brought to our attention, we would look at it. Uh, there are many things that are out there in the ether that aren't officially brought to our attention. So how would it have to be officially brought to your Excuse attention? The I'm bringing it to your attention. Sure, so. <laughs> this is pretty official. Sure. So we'll go back and take a look. In Ross Coulthard's words, Absolutely disgusting. Top secret facilities that you know about. Well, you know, everyone talks about Area 51. That's an old one. 
Um, it's so operational, uh, and particularly, you know, S3, S4, uh, Pahoot Mesa, um, out in Groom Lake. Are these in the U.S.? Yeah, or? this is, this is N- Nellis, N- okay. you know, that one. Um, and that's operational, has been since the 50s. Hidden agendas outside of the law, outside the control of Congress, or the knowledge of the American people. The fact that secretive things go on here is a given, even to the Soviets, who make daily spy flights over the facility. It's been known by many names over the years, the ranch, the skunk works. If ever there was a place to test a secret new technology, this is it. And that's exactly what's been done here for decades. Documents about something called Project Aquarius. The documents allegedly prepared for an organization called MJ-12 state that a program to fly recovered alien spacecraft was established in 1972. Exactly what the congressman was questioning the UAP task force about. He says he was hired to work at an area called S-4, which is a few miles south of Groom Lake. At S-4, he says, are flying saucers, antimatter reactors, and other working examples of technology technology that is seemingly beyond human capabilities. One of the major whistleblowers, Bob Lazar. My view on Bob Lazar is that his witness testimony is completely verifiable because most of what he said has came to fruition. Look what's happening in the Congress right now at the moment in American politics. This is what Bob Lazar spoke about back in the 1970s. Uh, a, a more state-of-the-art one is actually in the Dugway Proving Grounds, which is in Utah. Is this the one that um, you disclosed at the at the conference? Yes, I'm going to put a picture up of it right yeah. now. And so uh, that facility, there's something called the Avery Sector, A V E R Y, where there are these assets. There's an extraterrestrial vehicle that was being studied there. And as we're getting to the end of this video, I just want to show a bit about something that Dr. Stephen Greer says, because a lot of stuff he does say sounds fantastical, but when he breaks it down like this, it doesn't sound that far-fetched. Elon Musk is trying to do some stuff with Neuralink, but he's still using wires and at the speed of light. But the idea would be the same, that your, your thought could actuate to a technological interface that would then not only be using communication, because what's that? The speed of thought versus the speed of light. Corporations would be pissed off if we did hit zero point energy. You know, the gas industry, the power industry. Oh, sure. The car industry. It's huge. Everything, everyone. Well, the car energy would just have to pivot to the type of motor, and an electric motor with a, with a zero point generator and a little teeny three volt battery will start it up. Which I have spoke about in my previous video, The Lost Century and How to Reclaim It. If you wanna watch that, just go to my home page and watch the whole video. Um, you don't need these lithium ion gin- ginormous battery banks. Uh, those can be retrofitted, but yes, your, your public utilities eventually will retire because every home business will have its own energy source. Um, your big fossil fuel, uh, oil, gas, coal, nuclear power plants, they will all be mothballed. Hence, why the military-industrial complex doesn't want these technologies to get out. It's not going to happen instantaneously. As I said earlier, this is like a global Marshall Plan to rebuild the planet and regain this 100 years of lost social evolution for our civilization, keeping secret these technologies, right? And who is that benefiting? A handful of elites, super elites. Now, I think that just about sums it up. So the super elites, the military industrial complex doesn't want this technology to get out. UFOs have a major part to play in this. And um, I think Dr. Stephen Greer puts that all together pretty well. Hope you enjoyed listening and uh, see you next time.